Hello Internet, I am the Ares1999, and it would appear that I've been summoned here to talk about doing a summoner build in D&D 5th edition. A few years back I did a video for Shapeshifter where I talked about what classes, races, spells, and items would fit that theme. Today we're going to be doing the same thing for a different archetype. To clarify, this is for summoning, specifically. Animating objects, building constructs, and raising undead are all similar concepts, but not quite what we're looking for here. Now, from a spellcasting perspective, the best class would probably be Druid, since they get access to conjure animals, elementals, fey, minor elementals, and woodland beings. The only main conjuration spell from the PHP that they don't get is Conjure Celestial, since that is a cleric spell. Then Tosh's Cauldron of Everything went ahead and gave them access to summon Beast, Elemental, and Fey. So yeah, you got a lot of options there. Then after Druid, Warlock or Wizard would be your best bet, since they are able to summon Aberrations and Fiends, Shadow People, and the Undead. In addition, with Warlock you can take the Pact of the Chain to get an otherworldly being to help you, and Wizards get Find Familiar. But that particular spell could also be replicated with Magic Initiate or Ritual Caster if you want to stick with your Druid. Now, all of these spells, except for Find Familiar, are concentration, so you can only really have one going at a time. That said, if you used a higher level slot on the Conjure spells, you can pop more of these creatures into existence. If you really want to, burn an 8th level spell slot and just pop 24 Steam Methods on your side. How is that for action economy? On the other hand, the Conjure Fey and Tasha's Summon spells let you call upon a more powerful creature at higher levels. Ima Imagine summoning a powerful fiend while in the Nine Hells to fight a fiend. Wait, could you summon a creature you are currently fighting in order to bind it to your service? Anyway, <laughs> you can discuss that below, but for now, if you need a ride, for example, there is the uh, Find Steed, Find Greater Steed, and Find Vehicle spells. Uh, those steeds last indefinitely, and they're pretty much just designed to let a paladin get a horse. And the Find Vehicle lets you summon a car in a modern magic campaign. Then there's also Phantom Steed, which is very easily killed, only lasts for an hour, but is very fast. Now, that's pretty much it for spells, but for class features, Circle of the Wildfire Druid lets you summon a fire spirit to help you instead of shapeshifting into a beast. So yeah, Druid really is a good summoning class. The Echo Knight is all about creating echoes of yourself to aid you in battle. And at 14th level, the Undead Patron Warlock can project their soul out into the world. And, you know, higher level Conjuration Wizards can make their summons even more powerful. I summon Hydro Gedon in attack mode! Uh, rise! Hydro Gedon! Now let's take a look at magic items. The Efriti Bottle lets you summon a powerful genie. There's a 10% chance it will attack you, 10% chance it will grant you 3 wishes, and an 80% chance that it will serve you for 1 hour. So yeah, this could be a good way to get some wishes done. The Elemental Gem is a single-use item that will summon an elemental based on what type of gemstone it is. The Horn of Valhalla is an item of variable rarity that lets you summon legions of spiritual warriors from Isgard. Careful though, because if you're not a mighty enough warrior yourself, then they will attack you. Um, the Iron Flask is kind of like a Pokeball in that it can be used to capture creatures and then later release them under your control. Uh, the Ring of Genie Summoning lets you call forth a powerful air elemental once per day. And the Wand of Orcus lets you call forth legions of undead from the plains of death. So yeah, slightly different from raising undead, because I presume you're calling upon zombies and skeletons that are already animated. Minute difference, but we're going to let it count. Now, that is it for the official content, but I do have a special summoner class to review here. This was made by my friend Obedient Mammal, who I met on the Taking 20 Discord server. Now for the summoner, their hit die is a d6, so they have comparable health to wizards, but they do get better equipment, uh, proficiency with simple weapons and light armor, arcane focus for spell casting, and they are able to ritual cast the relevant spells. This class is focused around a creature called an Eidolon. This is an otherworldly being that you call by your side in combat. 
So it's almost like a cross between Druid and Warlock, but it is definitely a unique class. It takes 10 minutes to summon your Eidolon normally, and if it dies, it takes a long rest on your part in order to reconstitute it. If you fall asleep, then it needs to be resummoned. When you first take this class, you get to design your Eidolon. You choose its stats based on the standard array, and its monster type can be anything except for giant, humanoid, or ooze. Starting health is 8 plus constitution modifier, and it gains 5 HP for each summoner level you take after first. And after that, you can choose its general shape to determine how many legs, if any, if it has, or maybe if it's more like a fish. What I really love about this class is the customization options. Even just between type and shape, you already have 36 combinations, but it doesn't stop there. As you level up, you can select certain upgrades for your Eidolon called Evolution. You get Evolution points as you level to be able to make your Eidolon larger or faster or stronger. You can even have its attacks count as magical or let it breathe fire. You can't touch me, Sheriff! I brought my attack dog with a built-in force field! Well, I brought my dinosaur! Police force field dog! In addition to this, a summoner is a full spellcaster and uses charisma as its spell stat. This is one aspect that I feel kind of uncertain about. I think given the power of the Eidolon, the summoner should only be a half caster, like a paladin or a ranger. The way I see this class, the Eidolon does most of the fighting for you, so you don't need super powerful spells to make up for the low health. I guess we won't really know until we playtest. Uh, something that the designer told me is that the way he sees it being balanced out is that they don't get a lot of super powerful attacking spells at higher level. They're mostly just utility spells, so maybe that will balance it. Now, at level 2, you can perceive the world through your Eidolon's senses by suppressing your own. Uh, the subclasses are called Bonds, and you choose at level 3 between Broodmaster, Idolist, or Synthesist. In addition, if your Eidolon is low in health, you can start taking damage for it. As you level up, you get free summoning spells, such as Summon Beast and Summon Fey, that can only be used if Eidolon isn't on the same plane as you. I think that you should be able to summon once per day using these spells for free, and if you summon your Eidolon, then that spell immediately ends. Uh, ASI at level 4, like other classes. At level 5, if you summon a creature with a spell, then it gains temporary HP and can overcome resistance to non-magical attacks. At level 6, you can warp your Eidolon to your side. Level 9, you can use evolution points to evolve yourself, which honestly I think is really cool. You could probably design an entire class just based around custom upgrades for the player character. Uh, let's see now. Level 10, your Eidolon will stick around for a few rounds after you drop to zero instead of just immediately disappearing. And at level 11, it helps you with concentrating on your summoning spells. Level 12 is special in that once per week, you can change the evolution of your Eidolon without having to wait for a level up. So let's say that instead of it having a really strong bite, you wanted to have more legs, then you could do that. But you're going to have to wait another seven days if instead of legs you want to have wings. But if you want, you can try to force it to change again, but it requires that you succeed on a skill check or be unable to summon your Eidolon for a number of days. This feature also says that you have to spend a lot of gold for additional edits. I'm not sold on that restriction. I like that trying to edit your creature too much presents a risk, but I don't think it should cost hundreds of gold. Having to spend a ton of money is also something that holds a wizard back. So maybe slightly increase the DC of the skill check and have it only cost 20 gold per evolution point? That could be something. Um, at level 14, it only takes 1 minute instead of 10 to summon. At level 18, you can take upon the form of your Eidolon and copy its abilities. And at level 20, your Eidolon will stick around until it's dismissed or destroyed. Now how about those subclasses? Well, Bond of the Eidolist lets you make your Eidolon more special. This includes extra health, higher AC, and even more evolution points. Then at 15th level, you can swap positions with your Eidolon magically. Bond of the Broodmaster lets you summon several weaker Eidolons. They are smaller and as such have lower strength but higher dex. They also do less damage. You summon both at once, but if one is vanished, they both disappear. I think this restriction makes Broodmaster a little too underpowered. 
I think if one Eidolon dies, the others should be able to stay. Since they only have half the HP, they're going to die off really quickly. As you level up um, the Eidolon get pack tactics, you can use your reaction to take some of the damage that would be going to one of your Eidolon. And if you cast a spell with range of self, you can cast it on your brood instead. Third is Bond of the Synthesis. This lets you become one with your Eidolon. You take upon its physical stats and maintain your mental stats. The Eidolon's HP becomes temporary HP, and once those run out, the Eidolon is banished. If this happens while fused, you take damage from the forceful separation. At level 6, it becomes easier to detach and reattach. At level 9, you're able to upgrade yourself a lot easier. And at level 15, you can split or fuse as an action. Well, that's the Summoner class. I like what I've read about it so far, but it does need to be playtested. I look forward to having a chance to use it myself in a game. Uh, this class's creator, Obedient Mammal, says that he hopes to put it up on the Dungeon Masters Guild one day, but wants to make sure it's balanced first. If you're interested in playtesting, let me know. In addition, he has stated that the multiclassing requirement is a 15 of Charisma to multiclass in or out of Summoner, due to the strong bond required between the Summoner and the Eidolon. I don't personally like this, I think it should be a 13 like every other class, but I suppose that can be addressed in testing. So, yeah, you know, what did you guys think of this video? I really enjoyed getting to make it. I like being able to do videos like this because they tend to be applicable to more game types. You couldn't just drop a firebender into a Curse of Strahd game, but you could definitely have a character with summoning powers fighting against, you know, the Dark Lord of Ravenloft. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll try to have another one out soon. Till then, I'm the Earth 1999. Have a great day, and God bless.